Alrighty, we got a four on four on our hands. Oh, and a Minsk and Boo. It's about to be a five on four once I get the hamster involved. It's myself. It's Jesse Rubkin, former writer from Channel Fireball, of course. Uh, we've got Ick on our team. Gives me the Ick. No, I actually like Ick a lot. He's a real fun guy to draft with. And Frogerto, the focus frog himself. We're battling against Mandrel Man. Luis Salvato, Max Smith, and Reynod. We got some new additions to the server, and it is nice. I'm passing to Salvato. M Monkey Man's passing to me. Mandrel Man is a wild card. I'll let him do his thing. He likes blue-black combo style decks, which is good, because I'm going to take Minsk and Boo. Salvato's probably going to take... Well, he probably should take Memory Lapse. Probably will take Sneak Attack or Natural Order. He loves those things. Uh, I'm going to take Minsk and kind of see how this shakes out. Maybe Gaia's Cradle comes back to me. I think that would be... Not completely unrealistic. Second pick, got to take Fetchland, I think. I, I do like Dismember. I think it's a close between those two. But I think Fetchland, when I've taken a very powerful red and green card, taking a green-white fetch is a good way to ensure I can cast this. And if I end up in red, I don't need Dismember as much if I'm like... When you're blue-white, Dismember is like one of the best cards you can imagine. But when you're red and you can get a Chain Lightning or a Mind Collapse or whatever, it's not as critical. And maybe I'll wheel Ren and Six. That would be pretty nice. But I'll take Windswept Heath past Dismember. Oh, more Fetchlands. Yes, please. Got to be Scalding Tarn. Fetchlands that touch Minsk and Boo's color proportions do seem like a better pick. And now I really want this Ren and Six to wheel. But I'm going to pass a Polluted Delta and a bunch of, like, medium cards. So not, not too bad. This pack... Ooh, uh, I actually know what I'm going to take this pack. I wonder who can guess. It's not Thopter Foundry. It's not Godless Shrine. The Godless Shrine is not actually a terrible pick here to really good domain start. I think it's going to be Arwen. I found Arwen to be really strong if you can cast her, and I have a green-white fetch already. I feel like nothing... It's not like this pack has anything great. What's the best card in this pack? Maybe that it's like Portable Hole? I don't even think. Thopter Foundry, if you can get the rest of the combo. I think I'm just going to take Arwen here. And then I'm going to follow it up. Actually, I actually think I'm going to follow up with Luminar Casper. I've been on a bit of a white weedy kick. And having like, you know, some sort of like Naya aggro deck could be pretty good here. I don't think I want to take Goldspan or Trumpet and Carnosaur. Iteration's pretty good. But like, why don't I just take a really good white aggro card? And this could be Domain. This could be well, white green aggro splash Minsk and Boo. I could, I guess, be red, white splash Arwen and Minsk and Boo. That's also a possibility. But... I kind of like like this start. I mean, this this start has some good possibilities. There's a lot of different ways I could go from here, and I have a couple really powerful cards and a couple good lands. I mean, not much more to ask except, you know, cards that cost zero. Those are always nice to have, too. All right, here. So there's City of Traders, but I've ended up in, like, a white aggro deck. City of Traders isn't that good, and Wasteland, I think, is good no matter what. Plus, if that Ren and Six does somehow come back, I'll be happy, and I think Wasteland's just really good, so I'm, I'm happy enough taking that. Here, I might set up for Domain. I could take Hallowed Fountain and take, make Scalding Tarn into white. That's already good for what I have. And, of course, Heath into blue. Don't think I want to take Once Upon a Time over a duel. And I think I'd rather take an untapped duel over a tap Surveil Land. I do like Bobble, but I think Hallowed Fountain looks better here and now. Oh, man, this is close. Because Jetmere's Garden is pretty nice for my colors. I've got to take Jetmere's Garden. Badlands is cute for domain purposes, but I think taking a Triland that's color of the three colors I have already is a really nice pickup. So let's organize this a little more. So now it's like two fetch lands, the two things they fetch, a wasteland, and then the three spells I have so far. Pick your poison. Let's see. Yep, that'll make it to Mac with about three cards left, and he'll happily take it. He loves that card. He's right, to be fair. I think pick your poison is awesome. I don't think it's better than Jetmere's Garden in this circumstance, but I think after... Badlands and Jetmere's Garden, I would probably take Pick Your Poison out of this pack for with what I have so far. And now, oh wow, the Natural Order came back, but I don't think I'm doing that. I think I want to take another one of these lands and just have really good mana, I th and I think it's going to be Trop. It turns Tarn into untapped green, Heath into untapped blue, and it's just a really strong land. Now I could take Leovold. I don't have Black Fixing yet, but I'll probably get there. The other option is to take Usher of the Fallen. Because I think I think Thief of Sanity, Vindicate, and Leovold are all about equally hard to cast from where I am. But And Leovold's the best of them. Yeah, I'll just take Leovold. I think that that's going to be a better spot. And now I could take Hedge Maze. Or I could take Spell Queller. Or I could take Steel Seraph. I think I like Spell Queller here. 
And, oh, Scholar of New Horizon gets a bunch of these lands. But Portable Hole is also a really good efficient card. Leovold's a little sketchy right now. Uh, which of these white cards do I want? I kind of think it's just... I think it's Portable Hole, actually. Portable Hole is real good. Oh, Dragon's Rage Channeler is a nice one. And oh, I guess I'll take a Fallen Shinobi. This deck could actually play Fallen Shinobi. I don't have any black lands yet, so I'll have to see about that. And of course, the uh, Rin and Six didn't come back. This deck has a Noble Hierarch, has another Fetch Land, has an Atroxa. If I had taken Natural Order, I guess like Atroxa could be getting Atroxa in. Luris, but I don't think this is a Luris deck. I already have a bunch of really good expensive permanents. I don't need Raugren Triumph. I think it's got to be Noble. Noble's just really, really good. I do like Verdant, but I have already taken a ton of lands, and my mana's looking pretty good. And I'll take Noble, and there's plenty of cards I can wheel, because Retrofitter, Atroxa, Entomb, Converter, Luris, Duress, like those six are all very likely to go. Maybe one of the Burn Spells or a Raugren Triumph. And then I'll get back like Esper Sentinel. I get back a, one of whichever burn spell doesn't wheel. All that sounds pretty reasonable to me. I think Noble Hierarch has to be the pick. Mm, not in for Brain Freezer True Name. Not in for Troll of Cause of Doom. Samwise is good with the two fetches in the Wasteland. And I don't think I want to take Death Rite here. I think that Death Rite Shaman is solid. But I probably can wheel it. This pack isn't that great. There's also True Name. I actually have to give serious consider for, consideration for True Name. I have four lands that produce blue. And True Name with Arwen is disgusting. You end up with a 4-2 Life Linker. Can't race that. And it's good with Luminarch. Actually, I kind of want to just take True Name here. I think I will. I think, I think I'd rather do that than take Samwise. All right. Well, I mean, I'm just going to take Library and really hope to wheel Leyline Binding. Or plateau, those would be both be nice wheels, but I think library is too good to pass, so I'm gonna. I mean, it's not like you never pass it, but in this case, I certainly am happy taking it. And here, I might just take Thalia. Thalia just messes up a bunch of decks, and I have all creatures. I guess it does make Minsk and Boo more expensive, but I, I think it's a lot better than Sanguine Evangelist. Pride Mage probably wheels, or Besage you, or one of these lands. Yeah, I'll take a Thalia. And I'll probably follow that up with maybe just Stomping Ground. I already have a Tri-Land that I'm going to get most of the time. There's another Tri-Land too. The one thing Indotha Triumph does nicely is it gets me to, it gets a Black Source in. So I could maybe play Leovold or Fallen Shinobi. I mean, we could just go True Domain. Let's separate out Fetch Lands, Tri-Lands, and Duels actually at this point. And I'll keep Library above Wasteland because I would rather look at the library art. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm kind of in for Indotha Triumph and seeing what else comes back here. And then here there's Crucible to go with Wasteland and two fetches, but I like Red and Six a lot. I like Crucible a lot less. I could take a blue-black Surveil Land. Uh, actually, I'm not going to play any of these cards, and I don't really care much for Bank Buster. This deck's it's just too slow for this kind of deck. I could take Phantasmal Image. It's nice, really nice with True Name. basically has no drawback, but that's about it. All right, I'll take a Crucible for the sideboard. Now I'll probably just take Temple Garden. I, I have to imagine Temple Garden's going to be really good in this deck. Over Flame Tongue, yeah, that's that seems fine to me. I don't want the red white land. And now, ooh, this actually is the Niv Mizzet deck, and I can't wheel it again, even though no one would take it from me. Though I guess I only have three cards it gets. Four if I play Fallen Shinobi. I don't think I want Land Grant. Don't think I really care for Lush Portico. I think I'm going to have a mana base that can su support Skyclave. Though Rafine is also really good in this deck. Oh, it's so good with True Name. I'm going to go with Rafine because also, if I get that Shinobi in there. Whoa, Luris came back? So did Currency Converter? What's going on at this table? Mm, I don't know, but I think I want Esper Sentinel to go with Luminarch and Rafine. Just pumping Esper Sentinel can be pretty good times. There's also Death Greeter Champion, but I think I like taking something a little lower on the curve. Whoa, what a weird set of cards to, to table. I did not expect Luris or Converter to come back under almost any circumstances, but I guess this is where we're at. Let's get Fallen Shinobi in there. Okay, Death Rite actually looks kind of nice. I have two fetches already and a Wasteland. Wasteland by itself powers it twice. 
and I'm playing a lot of colors, and I don't want more tap lands that badly. And then maybe get Leovold in there too. We're, we're really domain aggroing here. White base domain aggro, I love it. Mana Confluence actually could be kind of great here. Though Hero Bladehold is really good. I feel like I have plenty of, of attackers here. Let's just take Mana Confluence because we, we are just going five colors. No domain cards, like no actual domain cards. Like Leyline Binding doesn't look like it's coming back. Um, Kosali Pride Mage did. I like that over Sanguine Evangelist just to have a two drop. So that's pretty nice though. I think Leyland Binding is the next pack, but I don't remember. Either way at this table with Mac, I guess just Mac is the one person who's going after that more, but other people might be taking those too. Benevolent Bodyguard has some applications, but I kind of wonder if Stunt Double will be good here. Stunt Double's impressed me. An instant speed clone, it's kind of nice. I do have a lot of legends though. Um, Sure, I'll pass. I think right now stun double is probably not good enough. All right, going into pack three, this is so weird. I have all creatures. I, I don't think this is a Simeon Spirit Guide deck either. And not the best open, but, you know, Fury gives me some interaction. I guess I only have two red cards right now. I could also just take Pest Infestation. That card's busted. Or I could take Bloodstained Mire. How crazy is that? Mm. Right now I'm... Seven. I need seven cards in order to present a deck <laughs> that has the right number of cards. There's also Animate Dead. It is a very strong card, though I don't know that I would want to take it over Fury. Fury doesn't really have any combos here. You know what? I'm going to take Bloodstained Mire. I think Bloodstained Mire is going to be really good in this deck. And then now I think I just take Palace Jailer and... There's a bunch of different lands that could potentially come back. Plus, Neshoba Brawler looks great. Meyer makes it easier to cast uh, Palace Jailer as well. It can go get Jetmir's Garden. All right, I'll take Palace Jailer and hope for Unruly Crisis as, as one of the potential things coming back. Ooh, there's Territorial Kavu. Also Arid Mesa. Also Remand and Spell Pierce, but in Sign of Draco. Wow, I can only wheel one of the two. It's okay, I'll take Arid Mesa and... Now we basically have perfect mana. <laughs> really wish I had that Ren and Six. And we'll, we'll, we'll take some more uh, interaction. We'll, we'll, we'll take spells soon. We'll take spells soon as, as he grabs Prismatic Vista. <laughs> the only, actually, the only thing I don't like about Prismatic Vista is I'm not going to play that many basic lands in my deck. <laughs> it's possible I just take Lotus Cobra here. Lotus Cobra with four fetches looks pretty good. Let's just do that. And then here, yeah, I mean, I don't really care about taking any of these black cards. I could just take a Breeding Pool. I could take Celestial Colony, but I don't really think that that's going to be great. Let's just take Breeding Pool here. I want to be able to cast this True Name. The True Name seems pretty important for the deck. And if I have to play Stunt Double, I'm not too sad about it. Now that I've picked up Palace Jailer, Stunt Double definitely gets better. It's pretty nice copying True Name. Spell Queller, because it's an instant. Yeah, we got we got some potential. The Dragon's Rage Channel should not be in this deck. I just i am never going to get Delirium. All I have is Creatures. I have 15 creatures in one non-creature spell. <laughs> All right, this pack, I don't really want Gilded Goose that much. Um, Yeah, I guess I just have to take Underground Sea. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take spells. Now I'm going to, trust me, I'll take spells now. I actually think Sarah Paragon, with all these fetches, plus all these powerful threes... Maybe I take that, or I could just take Intrepid Adversary. I guess I have a lot of good fours already. Or I could take Outland Liberator. That card is also just quite strong. Um, it's going to be one of those. I guess, given where I'm at, I kind of think I'd rather just have Sarah Paragon. The card's pretty good. And then Mana Tithe could be a nice little surprise. Though, actually, Invasion of Tarkir, it deals two. I don't have any dragons, but I have a lot of ways to flip it. I think Season Pyro, the mana on Season Pyro is going to be too much for me. So I'm not doing that. This could be a nice little mana tithe deck. I've got I've got some ways to discard it. All right, let's just go mana tithe here. Really nice little Glissa deck. Glissa is just one of the a strong card when you're just brawling. I guess maybe the stunt double goes out. I don't think I want touch the spirit realm. I think I'd rather have Glissa. Though, maybe the stun double makes it in. Would have been nice to pick up a little more acceleration, but I guess I have Noble, Death Rite, and Lotus Cobra. Yeah, that's that's actually not so bad. And I could play Simeon Spirit Guide, though it's 
with Leovold and Rafine in deck, it's not that good. It's really good with Minsk and Boo, though. I guess for the time being, Simeon Spirit Guide does seem good enough because oh, turn two, look, what if I go like turn two Thalia, attack, and then Simeon Spirit Guide out of Fallen Shinobi? That sounds incredible. Mm, okay. I love Unruly Crisis, but I have so many threes. I think I just take Neshoba Brawler. I really need this Territorial Kavu or Scion to come back. Okay, they both did. Of the two of them, I, I think I like Territorial Kavu better. Uh, it's just easier to cast, and it's really large. Oh, and then No More Lies is perfect. All right, see, didn't have to worry about getting enough playables. Uh, do I want a Dark Slick Shores, a Concealed Courtyard, or just a Shieldred's Edict? I think I just want a little more interaction. I could take Simeon Spirit Guide out now. And I'm not going to play the Restless Vents. I, I actually probably will play Underground Mortuary. All right, this is a nice one. I, I like the way this ended up. And uh, let's go to deck building. <laughs> I think this is really sweet. All right, well, I'm glad I didn't take Prismatic Vista because this is 39 cards. I've just drafted 39 cards straight up. Uh, I think for basic land, I do actually want to play a basic. Um... Probably two. I'll put a forest and a plains in. I'm gonna have to cut one card. Could be mana tithe. Could be this Shieldred's Edict. Or it could be the Stunt Double, but I have 19 creatures in my deck. I have to imagine Stunt Double is pretty decent. And though I do have four legendary creatures that it's not that good with, five. Alright. So mana wise, I've got one. Two, four fetches, right? Four fetches, and because of Jetmir's Garden and Indatha Trium, they all get every color effectively. And then let's just make sure, like Bloodstained Mire can get those two, can get Underground Mortuary, and can get Underground Sea. Oh, I kind of want a mountain because I have two different. I have three red lands. Yeah, I do need a mountain. Okay. And what else do I have? I have a blue-white fetch, blue-green, a five-color just land, a library, and a wasteland. Hmm. So maybe I don't need forest because I have, let's say, four green sources, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11, 12 green. So that's not, I don't need forest for that reason. And I guess I don't need a forest because I have Trop, Breeding Pool, Temple Garden. I'll always have one of those to fetch off these. And then Mire and Arid Mesa. Arid Mesa gets untapped green. Mire does not get untapped green. I never got a stomping ground. But I think I can cut forest for mountain here. Because I think I'm going to want plains because the plains is a second one after Hallowed Fountain and Temple Garden. And this gives me one, two... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten white. Yeah, I think this works. <laughs> what a funny deck. This is this is really nice. Uh let's 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 actually I, I want to sort the lands a little bit more. And this is four fetch lands plus plus two triumphs. Alright. Yeah, this this is this is a nice one, and uh, I don't think I want crucible. I just don't want to spend the time to do that. And I like how this looks. Let's uh, let's take a look what my team has. All right, my teammates have some good ones too. Frog, Wield the Retrofitter and his friends at Gadgeteer deck with Ballista, Zerda, Wheel of Fortune, Tinker for Blightsteel or Cannoneer, Jar, Tularen Academy. Really good Tularen Academy deck. This deck looks awesome. And then uh, Ick has a pretty solid green-white aggro deck with like Council's Judgment, Questing Beast, Underman Adventure, Othari... Birds in Hierarch, Gilded Goose. It's okay. But Jesse, her deck is a monster. This is one of the best cube decks I've ever seen. Black Lotus, Time Walk, Thassa's Oracle, Doomsday, Dark Ritual, Mystical Tutor, and Vampiric Tutor. Also, like, Bowmasters, Remand, Memory Lapse, Breach, Him to Turok, Mana Vault? Good lands, even? And it just, like, the Thassa's Oracle, Doomsday, Time Walk, Lotus thing... This, this deck looks incredible. So excited to see how this plays out. And uh, I think we've got a pretty good shot here, especially since I really like my deck too. Let's get to round one. All right, time for round one. Playing against Luis Salvato. Battle him up plenty. And uh, I guess I have to mulligan. Dang, 
Thalia into true name is a really strong start, and so is uh, fetch land. I guess portable hole is decent. I don't know. I still have to mulligan this hand. I will keep this and put stunt double back. And then I think, hmm, mulliganing plus library. I'll see what so auto does, but I'll probably just go turn on library, go. Turn two, I'll drop to seven, library, play in Dotha Trium, and then just kind of play out from there. The only reason I wouldn't do that is if he maybe had like a super fast start, but I don't know how likely that is. Neox against Celestial Colony. Yeah, we're playing library. We are playing library. And uh, Luis passed Jesse that Black Lotus, so he must have opened, since she has the time walk, he must have opened Soul Ring, I would imagine. Or Mana Crypt is another possibility. All right, I'll draw with Library. Library of Alexandria, what a card. And I think just playing Dotha Triome, unless, uh, if I draw an untapped white, I guess I could play an Esper Sentinel, but no, let's just play Endotha Trium here. Oh man, Esper Sentinel Fallen Shinobi? Oh, my body is ready. He's got to put some pressure on me, otherwise this library is just going to keep doing its thing. Monastery Mentor? Oh, that's pretty good. Eight. Um, let's go to seven. Let's draw off library. Let's play Lotus Cobra here, I think. And Monastery Mentor is definitely something I'm a bit scared of here. But we'll see how bad it gets. I don't know where to kill it right now, so not much I could do. Is this an iteration? No, it's a Manamorphose. Okay. Mentor going. Probably ends up with my Lotus Cobra being dead here, but I guess we'll have to see. And what am I kind of hoping to happen here? I mean, I guess, oh, Season Pyro, okay. That, that could be worse, but I'm not going to get a Shinobi in this turn. I might be able to sneak one in next turn. Discarded, oh, my Leyline Binding. Would have loved to see that. So, oh, we're going to get to cast something else here, too. It's like a dismember on my, yeah. Well, let me tell you, this isn't going great. He's down to three cards in hand. I guess that's something. Draw. <laughs> I can play Arwen. That's just okay. I think what I'm going to do is play Death Right Shaman. Go to seven cards, draw. Play Esper Sentinel. And then play Jetmere's Garden. And then at least the Death Right can block one of the tokens. <laughs> I'll take a bunch of damage. And I have a couple options. I could knit Fallen Shinobi, but I actually don't even know if that's going to be the play. I mean, I think I'm pretty dead. This is what's the reality. Okay, Cycling Ragrin Trium is not the worst. I could double block Monastery Mentor if he attacks. I might just do that. Double block Mentor. He's got a burn spell. All right, I take it. I'm at 10. I think I might just Shinobi here. I could draw with Library and play the land. What else could I do here besides Shinobiing? I mean, I'm taking six. I have to draw something because otherwise the colonnade kills me. But I think Shinobi is actually seems like a way to do to actually find something that'll win me the game. I think I don't care about playing, getting a land off of him. So I'm just gonna library. Oh, I guess that would let me recast the uh, Esper Sentinel. All right, let's go Shinobi. Let's go hit. March and Chain Lightning. Okay. Um, chain Lightning a Monk. Okay. And then March a Monk. I could also march the Season Pyromancer, but I don't even think that's good. 
And then now, if he has a land, which he probably does given his last turn, he could hit me for eight. But then the Shinobi gets in, so he's probably not going to do that. But he might hit me. Oh, Fury, kill the Shinobi, hit me for four. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Let's see. Well, how can I make some good plays this turn? I actually wouldn't mind drawing a land that is not... Oh, I actually kind of need to draw a land that isn't... Uh, a shock land. Well, I don't need to necessarily, but it would be really nice. Okay, and that can get a basic mountain. So I think what I want to do is play Arwen and Territorial Kavu. Yeah, that's got to be good, right? And then the colony can hit me, but I don't care about that. And it sets up next turn to gain a lot of life. So let's go Territorial Kavu. And I guess I will sack this, get the mountain, play Arwen, and pass the turn with the, the ability to gain lifelink off the territorial call. We can hit me down to one with this, with this colonnade, but then next turn I can like Rafine plus attack with Kavu or some combination of things like that. Mm -hmm. Hitting Fury off the uh, ninja would have been really nice. So yeah, I can't really attack with anything that isn't Celestial Colonnade because of Arwen here. And then next turn, if I play Rafine, I can attack and put a counter on the Territorial Kavu. <sighs> hmm. I mean, it'll get lifelink. We'll see what Salvato does. All right. That's kind of what I was hoping would happen. Don't think Sunbait Canyon is too big of a deal. All right, I guess I'll take it. I'm at one. Draw. Oh, Noble's also kind of nice. What if I went Noble and Rafine and then attacked and gained a million life? Noble. Uh, Rafine. Oh, oh, I tapped for Noble wrong. Okay, I guess I'm not refining then. Um, do I want to play Sarah Paragon first? No, let's just attack with the Territorial Kavu. Don't think I need to play Esper Sentinel here. And hit with the Kavu, and I think I'm going to discard to draw. I don't care about any of the cards in his, in his graveyard here. What am I going to cast this turn? I'm probably going to cast, I'm going to use the thing and then cast something out of the graveyard. So, oh, I actually could play Arid Mesa. That would be kind of nice. All right, let's just discard Breeding Pool then. Ooh, Leovold's kind of nice. And I don't think there's any way to, for him, to, well, he would need a spell in hand to remove a blocker here. So I don't gain lifelink damage or lifelink off damage, but uh, hopefully it doesn't have it. All right, I go to eight. All right, I'm at eight. And then I guess it's still probably Sarah Paragon. And replay Arid Mesa. And I don't think... I can get an, oh, I can get Temple Garden. All right, I think that's fine because I'm going to gain two life off this. So I'm going to go to nine. Oh, I can get Hallowed Fountain. That actually seems better. Go to seven and then cast a Esper Sentinel and pass the turn. I'm just going to draw off the Sunbaked Canyon. And then now I have Sarah Paragon to block the Colonnade and I just don't die for, to it. And then next turn I can Rafine and then make that Territorial Kavu, who still has lifelink, just massive. Let's see what he's got. He's tapping out for something. Could be a Caves of Chaos Adventure. That's also a card in his deck. <laughs> I might be able to Sarah Paragon Rafine. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to be a little short. Chandra Torch of Defiance. 
All right, and is that kill Sarah Paragon most likely? Seems hard to imagine anything else here. And then attack with Fury if he wants, but I can just chump with Esper Sentinel. Right now he can do nine damage to this Territorial Kavu, but I do have a Rafine if I wanna get that going. Let's see. Chandra's a little annoying, but it's not the end of the world. This has lifelink and it's large. This has lifelink, but no longer indestructible. I could also Rafine onto Arwen here. I could also not play Ravine, attack with Territorial Kavu as a 7 7, and then just play Leovold and then have Spell Caller up. Black. Blue, yeah, I could do that. And I get to discard a temple card and draw a card. But I think that seems okay. I'll attack Salvato. And discard a card. Discard temple garden. <laughs> Mana confluence not looking much better. And now blocking with fury plus elemental token makes sense. Or he could just not care about my life total and just chump. But I think this looks like a pretty good block. Okay, and those trade off. And I get a million life. And then now I'm gonna go Leovold. So, black. Oh wait, this the trop wants to be blue. Blue. Black, green, Leovold. And I think I'll leave up Spell Queller. Oh, can I play Rafine? No, I can't quite play Rafine and Leovold and leave up Spell Queller. That's, that's a little much. Uh, let's just pass then, because I'd rather leave up Spell Queller, because Rafine can just have an effect right away. And Chandra exiles the top card. It's a gold span dragon. Well, I can't even Spell Queller that, so okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Well, let's see what else Salvato has. Attacking me for four and making a treasure is pretty good, but it might not even be worth doing. I don't think I'm gonna play Spell Queller end of turn. Salvato doesn't do anything. Okay. Because I can just, I have good attacks without the Spell Queller, so. And then I can spell Quilter if he tries to play another spell here, as long as it's not a super expensive one. Ragavan, Nimble Pilfer. Um, yeah, I guess I will spell Quilter that, because every attacker is also pretty nice. He's one card in hand. I think I'd rather just get my thing into play. Oh, he had one more spell. Aragorn. I guess I would have preferred to spell Quilter that. Damn. All right. Well, we're still going to get to do some good stuff here. No more lies. Could be good at some point. Definitely want to play Rafine. And let's make an attack here. So he didn't even get to draw off the monarchy because of Leovold. He's at nine. If I attack with everything and I put the counters on Spell Queller, it blocks Leovold. Oh, he has lifelink though. That seems pretty bad for me. So I could just attack Chandra. <laughs> But if he's the monarch, nothing can block. I don't really like that. So I think I attack Salvato to take the monarchy. I don't think I attack with anything else. And Spell Queller gets big. Draw. Oh, Stunt Double looks like it could be pretty amazing here. Let's just discard the land. And I become the monarch. And pass the turn, draw another card. Kasali Pride Mage. Okay, that could be good too. Hmm. So I guess Chandra, we're going to start by ticking up Chandra. Hitting Prismatic Vista. I take two down to eight. Okay. So I'm the Monarch. So what's kind of interesting is if I end of turn Aragorn, stunt double the Aragorn, I could reduce some blockers nicely. All right. Colonnade, sure. 
Mm, eight. Uh, oh, I guess he's going to attack and stunt double and uh, make it so Rafine can't block. I guess that's the plan. And then I'm going to go stunt double. And I suppose I've got a copy gold span. Mm, well, that's for a straw card. Okay. Treasure. Oh, it's making Arwen can't block. Okay. So I can block with Rafine if I want to. That's interesting. He's got enough mana. Does he want to make a play first? I could block. How do I do this? I mean, I guess if he has something, I, I lose. But I could just block. He's at six. Hold on. If I just block Rafine Chump... He goes up to 10. No, that doesn't seem good. What I could do is I could stunt double, copy Arwen, and then make Rafine into a 2-5, but then he would still take the monarchy. What if, if Rafine chumps, and then I guess Noble chumps, I go to 4, he goes to 10, but then end of turn I cast stunt double on Aragorn, I become the monarch. And then I attack for way more than lethal. But if I do that, I think no matter what, it feels like I lose to some amount of things. If I go stunt double Arwen, I can then block with the new Arwen. Yeah, this seems a lot better, even though like I lose to kind of the same amount of things, but I feel like this... Puts me in a pretty good position. Oh, I don't want to copy it. I want to copy Arwen. I'll choose this Arwen to keep. And then go block Aragorn, block Colonnade, I guess. And then this, yeah, that. And then the new Arwen gets to put a counter on Rafine, so Rafine lives. I just take way less damage this way, too. I go to, instead of going to four, I go to like nine. Then Arwen on Rafine paying one. All right. And then now the Aragorn dies. We bounce. Salvato still has a lot of mana, but the Monarch doesn't do anything for him because he doesn't draw because of Leovold. And then next turn, I can attack... For a pretty good amount of damage. Oh, what is this? Oh, it looks like he's got something. Oh, Vindicate on the Leovold. Uh, I guess I'll draw a card. And then... Oh, Vindicate on the Spell Queller. Never mind, not the Leovold. He wants his Raghavan back. Okay. I guess that's fine. I feel like I'm in pretty good shape still. I mean... He doesn't get to draw a card this way. I'm at nine. Okay, let's see. I don't have very many cards <laughs> mana tied that do something right away. This has lifelink now? That's pretty nice. Um, I think I just play Pride Mage. And then attack with the Rafine on Chandra. I'm at nine, and I'll gain a bunch of life here. And I think I'm going to discard this Mana Tithe. Yeah, definitely, because now I can cast Portable Hole if I want on uh, Raghavan. And let's see, how much mana do I have? I could play Glissa, Portable Hole. And I couldn't leave up No More Lies, but I could play Thalia. That sounds pretty good. So let's go Thalia or Portable Hole first. Get the Raghavan. Play Thalia, and then play Glissa. And I'm at 14, so I'm at pretty good life total. And then 
I don't have the monarchy, but the monarchy is not really helping him that much right now. And uh, wow, we are grinding it out here with five color legends. <laughs> he could attack for eight in the air, but this Rafine is like really just going to go to town next turn. And we'll see if he do something. If not, I mean, maybe you just jam with the colonnade. Okay, I take eight. I'm at six. And Salvato can now, with a land, make Colonnade a creature on defense. And if he's drawn a spell, then I guess he'll play that instead. So he has still five mana to play most spells. Basically playing against like red, white, splash, vindicate, and Aragorn. Pretty nice, pretty nice. This is turning into a sweet game. I mean, this is game one. <laughs> All right, doesn't draw off Monarch. I have no more lies up, which is nice. I guess I kind of have to worry about Rafine decking me, but not really. All right, I kind of think it's time to just send in the clowns. So if I attack with everything, Rafine will get a bunch of pumps and and likely be big enough to, if not win me the game this turn, go pretty hard. I'm going to draw five cards here. Ooh, he's got something. What is this? Solitude. No, thank you. I'm going to pass on that one. No more lies, my friend. Oh, I have to pay one because of uh, Thalia. No more lies. I only get to keep one card here, but he blocks Glissa and takes... Oh, he's just lethal already here. Oof, what, what a wild game that was. Oh, and we got game one. Crazy. All right, so going to sideboarding. He's playing tons of removal. I don't have a sideboard. I could put in Sunfall in my all-creature deck. I could put in Shieldra's Edict. He does have, like, Goldspan, Aragorn. He has a couple big creatures, but Pir Season Pyromancer really protects against Shielder's Edict well. Uh, the Stunt Double has been awesome. I, I think I'm good for now. Maybe I'll want mana to tithe out Shielder's Edict in, per perhaps. All right, time for game two. On the draw here, and I'm going to keep this hand. Almost all my lands produce green, so Cobra's on soon. This has turn one Portable Hole in case he has his turn one Raghavan. And I have turn two Thalia, which... Besides making Minsk and Boo cost a little more, seems like it'll be pretty good for me. Let's see what Luis has going here. Prismatic Vista. Oh, this looks like a Raghavan. I, I really hope it is. It just makes my portable hole so much better. All right. Yep. Let's go. <laughs> Fallen Shinobi. Maybe at some point I'll get to Shinobi here. Oh, I mean, if I go Cobra and then draw Fetch Land, that could... uh. That could Shinobi. Oh, he sees the Shinobi. Wish I had drawn that one a little bit later. I'm telling you, Thalia into Shinobi is just the dream. Mm. I drew Breeding Pool. I'm just going to go Breeding Pool into Lotus Cobra. See what he's got. Oh, Cycle Timeless Dragon. That's not too bad for me. Next turn, I get to... I mean, next turn I get to play Minsk and Boo, depending on what he does. Probably doesn't have mentor in hand if he was gonna if he had probe. Oh interesting. Um I mean I'm just gonna go for the Minsk and Boo. I don't know. Doesn't seem like there's a big reason not to. Minsk and Boo. Three counters on Boo. Slam and I mean this game's almost just over. That's what Minsk and Boo does. If you can't answer it the card like right away, it just ends the game and Drawing a green source to cast a turn two Cobra meant that I had portable hole into Mins into Cobra into Minsk and Boo. And, you know, his draw was probably banking on that Raghavan. Or at least he was hoping that Raghavan would do a little bit more than just eat a portable hole right there. Sorry, sorry, monkey. You fell into the hole. And then next turn, just going to, I mean, we'll, we'll see what he does. But probably, probably just fine here is my guess. Like, there's not much you can do to answer Minsk and Boo on any sort of reasonable basis. Like, 
if he had a removal spell, he would have cast it last turn. I guess you can go like Council's Judgment, the Minskin Boo, dismember the the boo, and then still be in a lot of trouble. Aragorn is just like not really going to do it. Oh, Timeless Dragon. Yeah, that's not going to. Oh, Fury. Fury helps. Fury kill the Minskin Boo. Okay. We got ourselves a little bit of action here then. Um, let's go land at a blue true name nemesis. Choose you into, I think I actually want to play the death right because that makes it so I can ninja off of uh, Fallen Shinobi and then I'll, I'll make this trade here. I think that trade seems kind of forced. And then now if Deathrite lives, I get to Fallen Shinobi off True Name next turn. If it doesn't, I can still draw black, of course. And I have a Thalia, which I could have played, but I think getting the Deathrite out was better. Oh, this is going to... It's kind of forced to kill the Deathrite Shaman. Because Lotus Cobra also doesn't even help with Fallen Shinobi, unless I draw a Fetch Land. So I have that out there. But if the Fetch Lands almost all get black. I guess a lot, of, most of it is Indotha Triumph. So there'd be a one turn delay, except obviously with the Cobra itself. I mean, from my perspective, he knows about the Ninja. He knows my whole hand. I, I, I kind of feel like he's one wants to kill Death Right, but maybe he just hopes the Shinobi doesn't hit. Maybe he's got a. If he has Season Pyro in hand, it's kind of interesting. You could plus on mana and play Season Pyro. But that Prismatic Vista is giving me the ability to use Death Rite Shaman. All right, so he's going to Nug the Cobra. Sure. I mean, I could just draw black. That'd be the easiest. Uh, Rafine. Mm, is it eight? I mean, I think I'm just going to ninja him. I guess, hold on, if he has, if he has Dismember, that's just so bad. I don't think he has Dismember, though. I don't know. We'll. I guess we'll see. In for a penny, in for a pound. All right, uh, let's exile Prismatic Vista to get black. Play Fallen Shinobi. And hit. Oh, he has dismember. He goes to four. All right. I made my life a little bit trickier. I mean, he's at four against a true name nemesis here. I just couldn't resist. Uh, he's going to plus Chandra, I guess. Oh, play something else first. Oh, season pyro. Sure. Draw two cards and then plus Chandra. Maybe for mana. Yeah. And then play something. Okay. Okay. Oh, what is this? Oh, Broadside Bombardiers. Okay, so he can kill Deathrite, I guess, if he wants. I don't know if he's going to want to do that. It's not crazy to kill the Deathrite. The Season Pyromancer sacks to deal, Pyromancer sacks to deal five. Is it four? I mean, Deathrite taps for mana again, thanks to the Gemstone Mine being in the graveyard, so... I do think going for the Shinobi is wrong, but I just kind of wanted to do it. <laughs> All right. Any land is pretty nice here because I can go Thalia into True Name. And now I can double block the Bombardiers. I guess what he can do is he can flashback Pyromancer, attack the Bombardiers, throw a token at the Thalia first. We'll see. I mean, maybe before doing that, I guess you can plus Chandra. Now, if I draw a black source, Rafine has a chance of killing with True Name Nemesis. If I draw an Exalted Creature, I win. Inspiring Vantage, so I go to 12. I mean, this is pretty close because he flashes back Season Pyro. Attack, throw the Elemental at the Thalia. I go to 10, so I'm at 7, so I'm at 5. So he has to draw a 3 drop to kill me. Um, Nishoba Brawler doesn't change too much, but I think I just have to attack Salvato anyway. Put him to one. 
And there's a lot I, I lose to here. So Broadside Brawlers did come back. I guess I guess I guess the ninja play was maybe a little bit ambitious. He came back from a fury. The fury came back from Minsk and Boo. So if that turn I just play Rafine or something, I probably can't lose, but why do that when you can get greedy? Hit island, I go to eight. I guess I block Bombardiers, I go to six. He has to have a four drop to kill me. Because I can block the elemental token. He's got it, he's got it. He gets to crack Sunbaked Canyon first, two to draw a card. Obviously Solitude does it. Aragorn does it. Um, what else did he play? Mentor does not quite do it. He's one short with Mentor. All right, he's cracking that. Mm. Do you got it? We'll see. March of Otherworldly Light. Oh, Leyline Bind. No, Leyline Binding doesn't do it because he has to sack. So he gets to hit me down to five. Oh, and then Phantasmal Image on the Bombardiers. Or True Name, either one. Wow, what a sick game, too. I, I, I really got too greedy, but I got my just desserts. This has been a sick match. On to game three. All right. On the play, game three. This is a nice hand. I'm going to lead on Esper Sentinel, and then I have turn two, Mana Tithe, and uh, Underground Mortuary. And Esper Sentinel, Mana Tithe is also a really nice combination. It just makes it so... The odds that he plays a spell and then pays the one for Sentinel and the Night of Mana Tithe, they go up a lot. Like, the combination of those two cards is pretty good. They both tax their opponent's mana. All right. Yeah, let's play the Underground Mortuary. Graveyard that. Send. I don't... Oh, Bloodstained Mire doesn't... Oh, no, I have Underground Sea. Yeah. Oh, what a great deck. What a great deck and great construction. Okay, let's... See, like, here's what I'm talking about. He's going to pay for the Esper Sentinel, and then I'm going to Mana Tide the Mox. We take it. We take it. All right. Draw. If I draw, like, a Glissa or something, that'd be awesome. But this still works pretty nicely. Because I get to Spell Queller if I want, and then Palace Jailer. Um, let's just draw... Oh, library, huh? Send with the Esper Sentinel here. I don't know what he's up to, but I don't really want to play into it. Mm -hmm. And play a tapped Temple Garden. And hopefully he plays something this turn that I can snap up with a Spell Queller. No? All right. I'm just going to sack this now then. Yeah, I'll get underground C, draw. So I don't have red, but I have everything else. Could go for a cheaper card. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. So let's just go Temple Garden to get this Noble going. And the Noble means I also have the mana to, to maybe go like Spell Queller plus something else here. What I don't want to see is like a gold span dragon. That would be pretty annoying. And then next turn, maybe I play Paragon. Because I can immediately play a Bloodstained Mire out of the graveyard, which is pretty nice. Hmm. Yeah, it's okay. The good thing about gold span is I have a Palace Jailer for it. And then a Spell Queller to hopefully back that up. I would like to draw a land here. Land would be really nice. Uh, that's not a land. I guess I will still play Palace Jailer, though. Okay. And then I'll play a Pride Mage. And send for three here. And then draw end of turn. And hope he doesn't have... I mean, Fury would be annoying, but I couldn't stop that with Paragon. Oh, that would have been really nice to draw earlier. 
or a certain couldn't stop fury with spell queller. But fury doesn't get him out of this by itself. Obviously, it is good. And the gold span being the card that's locked away is nice because that's the haste creature we've seen. Broadside bombardiers. Oh my god, broadside bombardiers would be so gross here. Okay, that is not it. Fury is still pretty good. He kills Pride Mage, Hierarch, and Esper Sentinel. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. It would have been nice to draw my Mana Leak earlier. Wouldn't have played that Pride Mage. Uh, let's go Sarah Paragon. There's nothing I can get that lets me... Wait, hold on. Yeah, I can't have no more lies up, but I can go Sarah Paragon into Noble Hierarch. And then play Jetmere's Garden. And then pass. All right, and then I can just block with the Noble. At least that's my plan. And I get to draw another card. All right, let's get a little action here. Leyline Binding on the Sarah Paragon, okay. And me fresh out of Kosali Pride Mages. What is this? A Tali hitting Aragorn and Thalia? Hmm. Okay. He becomes the monarch, so he gets Goldspan back. All right. I deserve this for my uh, dismember play. <laughs> hmm. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what. He had a game here where he never put a spell in the stack that I could spell quiller after the mocks. He played 5-drop, five 5-drop, five 6-drop, 7-drop. But I could have won game 2 pretty easily, so that, that's on me. What's going on here? Why aren't we casting this Thalia? Are we deciding not to cast Thalia? I'm not entirely sure. All right, here comes Aragorn. He's just not casting Thalia. And is it 9 I guess I just take 10 here and hope... I don't even know what I could possibly draw. Minsk and Boo? Does that do anything? <laughs> I did draw the Minsk and Boo. Uh, that's not quite going to do it. All right. 0-1, but uh, <laughs> that's what you get for greeting. All right. Time to battle Mac. Let's see if I can, if I can really get him. Uh, I mean, I will try with this hand. I'm going to lead on Indotha Triome here, I think. Or I guess I can lead on Arid Mesa. And if I have to Mana Tithe on turn one, I suppose I will. Mm -hmm. he has, Mac has Soul Ring in his deck, and if he resolves man, Soul Ring when I have Mana Tithe, it's just like ridiculously bad. Uh, let's get Jetmere's Garden here. Ooh, Nishoba Brawler into Rafine on three. Yeah. We'll mana tie at some point, but right now I'm going to be happy enough playing Brawler and going for the, the max amount. No play, huh? Ooh, True Name is also something I'd be interested in at some point here, but let's see. Uh, oh, wait. I can't... Uh, I can't Rafine on these lands. <laughs> it's fine. We'll hit for five and have Mana Tithe up and then cycle and Dotha Triumph. Or just Mana Tithe his play this turn. Oh, Fable, but can't Mana Tithe it. Yeah. All right. Fable's not actually that bad. I do think I want to cycle this because I don't want to play a tap land next turn. Okay. I mean, I might have to. Let's see. Let's hit for five again. And then play Underground Mortuary. He's going to have a lot of mana regardless. And then now I could cast... That's going to let me cast Rafine next turn. Um, yeah, I'll put the Territorial Cobble on top. This It's, it's a two mana five five. It's got to be at least decent. Discarded Fiery Confluence and Death Greeter. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> I know Mac is just steaming right now. Oh, he had the snuff out. That made that a little bit less exciting. Uh, still pretty good. Still pretty good. All right. I take some damage. And I guess I'm going to wasteland the Black Cleave Cliffs. I think I just play Territorial Kavu over Rafine because this, this is lethal next turn with uh, Rafine here. And if Mac wants to get a treasure out of that goblin, he has to attack. Or he can just kill my Kavu. That also works too. Oh, persist on Caves of Chaos Adventure. Okay. Okay. Get a mountain here. City Traders goes away. Something else? You can also kill the Kavu? Oh. Uh huh. Interesting. Um, if I attack with Kavu as a 6 6, yeah, that's pretty good. And then maybe I, and then the Rafine next turn is still pretty good too. Let's attack. So I actually want to do this first and discard library and draw and then Rafine. And I think discard Leovold. Because so I think I'd rather have these flyers here. <laughs> can block with all three of the tutus. Or you can block with Caves of Chaos Adventure plus there's or you can just chump, yeah. But I think the triple block makes sense. Alright. Territorial Kavu comes for his daily bread here. And then I'll play my land. And next turn, I can't get a blue off of uh, Rafine, unfortunately. Okay. Exiles a Swamp. Yeah, I go to eight. And which really make puts me at three. Soul Ring, sure. Um... I can get untapped lands if I need to. I really would like to draw a removal. Oh, Sarah Paragon. So if Sarah Paragon puts me at 12. Yeah, that puts me at enough to, to not die here. So let's attack with Rafine first. What am I going to do this turn? I mean, I guess if I had drawn a land, I could play Sarah Paragon plus Territorial Kavu, and that would have been truly excellent. Oh, wait, I am going to draw a land. I'm going to hit with Rafine. All right, I'm discarding no more lies then. And I'm going to get a plains. Or mountain. Now, plains is good. I'm going to get a trop with this. I go to seven. Plains. Paragon. And then play Territorial Kavu. And then, yeah, if he kills... If he kills the Kavu... Actually, I don't die, because I go to 9, and then block the Caves of Chaos Adventure. Take 2, go to 7, trap down to 2, and then Rafine... Well, Rafine doesn't actually win the game either. It comes close, but... This is a this is a great draft. I'm a little like I, I would normally be like a little annoyed that I like punted against Salvato to lose that game. But just these games have been so good that I'm just having like a great time. Plus Jesse's gonna 3 0, so like we don't even have to worry about that. <laughs> Alright. I mean I'll double block here, I guess. Let's see what he hit. Gristlebrand. Uh yeah. Double block to not die to a removal spell. You trade. I still have the initiative. Uh, it's going to be a tough one to get out of this, Macklemore. <laughs> Let's see what this is. Oh, is it from the catacombs? Okay, I go to two. And then you draw a card, two. Okay, okay. 
I have two spells in hand though, so Rafine is going to be lethal. Um, I guess I can even play the Luminarch. Rafine, attack, and connive on Rafine. And then exile from the catacombs from the graveyard. Discard true name nemesis and spell queller. Or Minsk and Boo leaving up spell queller. All right. We got game one. Thanks to Manatithe. Still probably don't have a sideboard. Maybe I want Simeon Spirit Guide just to go a little faster. I already got him pretty good with Manatithe. Maybe I can board it out. Yeah. Look, Simeon Spirit Guide and Manatithe are kind of like opposites. So boarding it out makes actually kind of a lot of sense. All right. Game two on the draw here. Yeah, we're mulling the one lander. <laughs> well, I'm keeping this. I think I put Spell Queller back. The thing is, if he plays turn one Soul Ring, yeah, I'm just going to have to portable hole it. So I can't. I can't sit on library, unfortunately. Portable Hole has been kind of the MVP here. It killed a turn on Sol Ring and it killed a turn on Raghavan. And now I'm just going to go for a turn three Minsk and Boo. See if that works. Cobra. I mean, Cobra has a pretty good chance of dying here, yeah. But I can still turn four Minsk and Boo. That also works for me. I'm going to play the Windswept Teeth because I don't have an untapped red land to get off of it. Oh, this game, this game's not going to be quite as good as some of the other ones. Let's just put it that way. Maybe if I hadn't killed a soul ring or if he had drawn red, but uh, I think barring something pretty spectacular, I got this. Though I thought that against Salvato and I managed to, managed to throw that one away. If he drew red this turn, maybe we'd have a have a game, but I don't think this one's going to pan out for young Macklemore here. Uh, let's just put the counters on this. Attack and Spell Queller. Light, blue. And boom, that'll do it. One and one. Let's get to round three. All right, we're going to take a live look in because I really wanted to watch Jessie play some uh, games. Uh, she's 1-0 and up a game on Salvato. She <laughs> turned two time lock, turned three doomsday uh, to win last game. And ooh, we'll see what action we've got here with uh, a lot of combo potential here. And it's actually kind of nice for our team that I'm the one who has like Thalia, Mana Tithe, Spell Quell, or No More Lies. Like, I actually have a decent amount of the counters, which Jesse's deck would be a little bit more vulnerable to than most, just because when you go for a Doomsday, it's kind of awkward if they have a counter. But it looks like turn two, we've got our mana, and what are we going for? Looks like nothing, which that is reasonable. It is a little scary against a combo deck when they're like, think, 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 okay, pass the turn. And it's just like, Hmm, I feel like my opponent who has Black Lotus and Dark Ritual in their deck could have done something a little different there, has chosen not to, and you don't feel great about it. All right, and Salvato needs to get something on the board because if no one's doing anything, then it's a lot better for Jesse. So Mentor is actually the sort of thing that you want to see, though. If Salvato had Mentor, he probably wouldn't have cast Manamorphose first. Maybe he's setting up a Season Pyromancer? That could be. Nope. Blue Black. Oh, Vindicate on <laughs> the Badlands. And getting Remanded. Oh, Remand when they use Manamorphos to cast it? That's kind of nice. Oh, Upkeep Vamp. Okay. <laughs> now it's time. Let's see what this leads to. So... I would be kind of surprised if Black Lotus wasn't cast this turn in one way or another, but there are, there are situations where that couldn't be the case. For example, if Jesse has Doomsday and uh, Dark Ritual, could go get Time Walk or something. There, there are a lot of different options. Oh, and there's Black Lotus. That 
like yeah i just think that there's so many combinations that involve lotus and now it's like doomsday and then just immediately cast time walk and you just win the game right there it's when you get time walk and black lotus doomsday becomes pretty gross all right we finished doomsdaying so let's see what does jesse got here yeah i mean i see black lotus thassa's oracle time walk and past that it kind of like doesn't really matter i don't know what the last two cards are but unless Luis has a really good play this turn i think next turn is going to be doom and five cards left i guess you can try to like kill thos's oracle with trigger on the stack but that is just really not that likely to work and Pretty good chance that uh, Jesse has some kind of protection here, whether that's a, a discard spell, maybe a counter, though I guess Remand and Memory Lapse are both gone here, but something along those lines. All right, and Salvato's on Raugrin Triumph Go, which is kind of all you can do against Doomsday sometimes. It's not like playing a creature matters. Like, <laughs> the game's going to end this turn one way or another. So just keeping all your mana up is a pretty good way to to be safe there. Mana Vault. Oh, okay. So we're on a lot of mana here. And start with a Knight's Whisper. Okay, going down to two. Cards in deck, that is. Lotus. And Thassa's Oracle. No, this is this is something else first. Oh, Vendillion Click. Nice. Oh, Vendillion's actually kind of like double protection because it also means if Salvato kills the Oracle, the the devotion from the Vendillion click works. Yeah, really nice setup by Jesse here. And I'm sure, yeah, she doesn't take anything with the V click because I'm sure Salvato doesn't really have a good answer. And then time walk, just in case, like maybe the last card you have or one of the last two cards you have in deck. Oh, is Thassa's Oracle. So we're just going to immediately time walk and then draw. And then... You could even set it up so that the last card is like a regrowth type effect to bring back Oracle if need be. And Thassa's Oracle, and that's the match. Awesome deck. All right, time for round three. I'm on the play, and six land Glissa. That's not going to do it. Oh, this hand will do it, though. Um, I'm going to keep, I'm going to put back Esper Sentinel, playing against a Llanowar Elf deck. Esper Sentinel's not the jam there. And then turn two, it's going to be kind of interesting. Do I play... I think I just leave up Spell Queller here. And just go Spell Queller into Luminarch or something along those lines. Yeah. All right, there we go. Let's see. It's either Temple Garden or just Plains. I think just Plains is fine here. And then being a confluence <laughs> means I don't really need anything else. Any to fetch any particular thing. Oh, I can play two things this turn. You know how much I like playing two things. That's like my favorite thing. All right. In territorial Kavu. And then Luminarch the spell queller. We're just going in on the spell queller here. <laughs> look at this. Look at look at this draw. This deck is great. I should have three out. <laughs> Only my greed might stop me, as usual. <laughs> uh, I mean, this could be a natural order here. That would be potentially bad for me. Well, it looks like a Green Sun's Zenith for three. What's the best thing Mandrel Man could get on three? Grist? No. I guess Endurance, but also no. <laughs> All right, let's draw... <laughs> Rafine. All right. Uh, well, actually, Arwen is actually better because I don't really need... I'm not going to discard Arwen to Rafine. I think I'll just put a plus one, plus one counter on the Territorial Kavu. Attack with both. And exile nothing. I don't, I don't want to discard Rafine here. And if Mandarin blocks the Spell Queller, then uh, 
Yeah, I mean, look at this. this what a bulldozing. All right, time for game two. Uh, I just, I mean, Sunfall doesn't sound crazy, especially since I don't think Mana Tide is great. Maybe I'll just put in Sunfall. And you know what? I'm going to put in Simeon Spirit Guide. We're just going to go fast here. That's what we're going to do. And we'll see. If, if Mandrill ends up with showing me a deck that like I really need Sunfall against, maybe I'll try it, but... I kind of feel like I could just be the beat down here. No real re reason to side in a five mana spell that kills all my own creatures. I don't like that. Uh, oh, Simeon Spirit Guide. Let's go. Turn two Minskin Boo. Let's do it. <laughs> Turn one Death Rite off of probably Tropical Island. Turn to Mire for... Oh, wait, no, I can get Underground C off Bloodstained Mire, so I actually want a Death Rite off of Temple Garden, maybe? I mean, it clones in Dotha Trium, but I think that's okay. Yeah, let's just get Temple Garden. Though I guess I actually could just get... Could have just gotten Underground C for that. Sure. Also fine. Delighted Halfling? Okay, well... Let's get Underground C here. Exile this, add red, and then cast Minsk and Boo. Turn two, Minsk and Boo. And let's put three counters on Boo, Boocifer here, and smash. Mm -hmm -hmm. All right, what does Delighted Halfling have? It's got to be pretty good. That's not a questing beast. That's the card I'm worried about. All right, so Minsk and Boo don't want to get more counters here. Uh, oh, Portable Hole for the Beast token. Let's go Portable Hole, eat the Beast token. Here, this is going to just be all value. Attack Garrick. Minus two, sack Boo here. Nug the Delighted Halfling and draw four cards. Ooh, and we got some potential Shinobi action. And I guess, I guess I, would I want to play Thalia? No, I'll just play Neshoba Brawler. That seems fine. Because I use up my last land to play Thalia if I do that. So... For, for death right shaman purposes that is so i think this looks okay and then make another token oh does he have a tachana's tide binder that would be sick palace jailer we, we got some action here let's play a land put three counters on boo and this gets a brawler up to the full amount attack and i can't resist fallen shinobi it's going to be my downfall one day and by one day i mean against salvato but this is still pretty sick all right let's cast torsten <laughs> Let's put all these cards in hand. Hey, where did you go? What's happening? <laughs> I wasn't done resolving my Torsten yet, thank you very much. All right, this deck was a blast. I had a great time. I actually really should have 3-0'd, but you know what? I want to take a look. This deck, It might have. you might have thought during the draft that I was going way too high on lands, like taking lands super high, but here's what I get out of it. First of all, Territorial, Kavu, and Brawler were just on. And if I had gotten the Leyland Binding, it would have been excellent. Sign of Draco, you know, was in the same pack. But still, two mana, five, five, two mana, five, three trample. Great. I also got to put, like, Minsk and Boo, Palace Jailer, Leovold, Rafine, <laughs> Luminarch Aspirant, True Name Nemesis, and Noble Hierarch all in the same deck. Because my mana actually did cooperate. I had four fetch lands, two triomes, and four... Five untapped duels, plus a, t a Mortuary is another tap land, and a Mana Confluence. And that just worked out like a charm. I really never got Mana Screwed. Glissa, Arwen, like these are just rewards for being able to take cards of all the colors. Some really powerful stuff like Leovold and Rafine are just hard to put into decks. But early picks on lands make up the power with the later picks there. And, you know, just a little bit of interaction. Mana type, the Portable Hold did a lot of good work. No More Lies, Spell Queller. 
This deck ended up working out really nicely, playing out great, and the games were sweet. So can't ask for much more than that. And we're going to win the draft because, again, I went 2-1, Jesse went 3-0, and I think Frog and Nick probably picked up a round or two between them. In any case, that'll do it for today. They're not always five colors, but when they are, chef's kiss. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel, and you won't miss a single draft.